Hey all, this is Eric with Shot Ops RC. I'm gonna just do a video of a complete teardown of my Vertex 18 engine for my uh, Red Cat Racing Shockwave Nitro RC car. So uh, I have the head off already because if you look closely here, I dropped it by accident and broke one of the cooling fins off. So technically this would work. Technically. Um, so, and the head gasket is still on there. That silver earring right there is a head gasket. See, they, it's the same head, just a rock color. I ordered the purple. They sent me a blue. And they just want to refund me my money and let me keep it apart. So, I'm just going to have a non-matching cooling head. So, first things first. Let's get the front of the motor off here. So, this is where the clutch rides. Uh, which I have that off too. Uh, so it's really a two flywheel motor. So that's flywheel, okay? So with the front end of the motor part, might as well take the carburetor off. It's just a little screw right there. So it'll cooperate here. On a rod. It does walk operate, but that's okay. We won't take the carburetor off. So, what we need to do now is pull the starter off. That's this thing right here. It allows me to electronically start my motors, because trust me, I've dealt with pull starters enough to tell you I hate them. Some people will tell you, oh, leave them alone, they're simple. Yes, they're simple, they break easy. And they're a pain to the frickin' butt, especially when you gotta tune the motor. So, just say no to pull starters if you can. <laughs> so, uh, my buddy Delaware RC thought it'd be cool f to have me guys show you this video. So, if you have a second, go check out Delaware RC. So, just getting some paper towel here, you guys, to set stuff on. So how this works is it rides, that knot rides on the bearing on the back of the motor. This is a one-way bearing. So that way, the pull start, see how it frees one way and doesn't spin the motor, but the other way it spins the motor. You can hear that now. Um, that's how a one-way bearing works. So it only spins one direction. So, so pull the one-way bearing off. I like to just put it in the starter so I don't lose it. And there's inside screws right here that we gotta take off. Uh, so let's start breaking these loose. All this is is a plate with a bearing. More than likely there will be grease on the back side slash oil, that's okay. Uh, with a two-stroke motor, just expect oil. <laughs> it's just the way they run. There's no oil in the bottom end of the motor, like a car motor, because to lubricate itself, it uses oil in the fuel. And I'll explain it a little more once I get it apart. So we got the back plate off. There's inside the motor with the crank and rod, con rod is what some people call it. So, uh, this is the starter shaft on that back plate, okay? There's a gasket on that, so be careful. So, um, what we need to do now is get bottom dead center. So the piston's all the way down. Probably can't really see that. Uh, you can use a rag or a heavy duty paper towel just I'll show you guys what I did here in a second it's kind of hard to show on video um, you just want to get a paper towel or a rag and uh, force it through the exhaust into the chamber because when you spin the motor it will pop the cylinder up uh, which you want it to do. 
Once it's broke loose, you can carefully just do that with it. Let's see here. Get the other flywheel here to help spin it to make it easier here. Now the solder only goes in one way, so you don't have to worry about that. You just kind of pry it up, okay? Like so. That's the solder, okay? Um, next, we gotta get the rod off the crank, which you do right there. But just carefully. Popping it off the crank. So. And you can't really get it off without the solder out, you guys. So. I had to put the cylinder top dead center to get it out. But there's a piston and cone rod. So I'll show you a couple things real quick after I get the crank out. So some motors that has a, a sleeve in it to where you can't do what I just did. But the, see that hole? When fuel goes into the motor, it goes through the crank and then up through ports in the side of the motor right here. And so it uses the fuel to lubricate itself. So, also, these are uh, what's called this. The cylinder is tapered, so at the top it gets narrower, so there's no rings like in a car motor. Okay? So, one thing you have to be careful when you put it back together is. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. See that groove? At the bottom of that groove of the rod, there's a hole. So that hole has to face the crank inwards because that's how oil gets into that brass bearing right there. So, um, but so here's the cylinder. It literally ignites the fuel by squeezing it till it explodes or turns the gas, okay? Um, so as you can tell, these motors are really simple to break apart, okay? Um, I'll do another video putting it back together, but you can see this motor of mine has almost no wear. Um, because I bought an upgraded motor for my Vortec, or sorry, my Shockwave. That the carburetor was goofed up from the factory, but well, it was a Chinese supplier, and it was easier just to pull the carburetor off my older VX16 and tune it. So, um, real simple to get the to get the rod out. There's a wrist pin. Some of these will have a clip on the end, but quite literally. Goes in like that, and boy, my guy, I'm taking it apart because it's yucky. But uh, so that's your wrist pin right there. So interesting setup for sure, to say the least. Um, but this is Eric with Shaw Ops RC. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, welcome to all the new subscribers and all my subscribers. Um, also follow us on Instagram, that's where I post short clips of things, and I'll probably post this there as well. But otherwise, other than that, this is Eric with Shallops RC, out.